there are unique challenges that women face when it comes to money, and one of them is financial cheating. So right now in Kenya, about 80% of people retire poor. Income, savings, spending, investment has changed my life. Welcome to the Overreact podcast, proudly sponsored by Johnny Walker, a bold flavor for those who take bold steps. To be enjoyed in moderation and drink responsibly, not to be self-repressant under the age of 18. In a society that likes to put women in a box. Let's overreact and boldly today, four women in the house, t- talking about money. That's a bold conversation. Money, money, money. Yes, it's a go Momo Hoya. I'm feeling bold. Yeah. You know, because I've done some, you know, some bold steps. I've walked truly in my, um, you know, purpose. I love it. Yeah. Um, it's your girl, Lash Angela, and I look forward to sharing how uh, money is working for me. The ladder that I am using. <laughs> or rather, it's, it's, it's using me. In this economy. In this economy. (laughs) And I'm Angela Wamboy and I'm feeling bold because I know that each of us as women have the power to multiply. Multiply the money that's in our in our pockets. Say it. Yes. Um, Amazing. And today we're talking as as Mo had alluded, we're talking about money and um uh, financial empowerment and we have with us Valentine Jeroge, uh, the co founder of Africa's Pocket. And I want to welcome you to the studio. And maybe you can share how you're feeling bold today. I'm feeling bold because I'm an African woman wearing African print. And we're about to build some generational African wealth. Say it, don't break it, drop mic. Yes, yes. Yes. I think we are the generation that is going to boldly um, reframe the conversation of money. Mm -hmm. Like wealth is not masculine anymore. And as Angie said, you know, that power we have as women to multiply, you mm-hmm. said it, we are going to be creating generational wealth. I think let's start on a bold step. So what are the bold money moves you want to make in 2024 or you've made this year or you've made in the past that can encourage someone else to follow suit? For me, it's the money principle. Um, income, savings, spending, investment has changed my life. And the budget rule around like spending 50% to my uh, needs, my wants, and then saving. Um, grew up in a household where money was, you know, my guka, my dad, everyone made the decision. And I didn't see m- women actually being involved in that conversation. So being in charge of my money, it's like bold both moves both I, like i want to go to say cape town i pay for myself without asking uh you know for a man to just do that for me and i think that's bold that's something that i've done this year and i'm very proud of myself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love it. <laughs> um i think unlike more i did have the opportunity to be surrounded around a lot of female entrepreneurs um, and so I think also anyone that knows me know, knows I'm a woman of many, many hats. Thank so you, I really, <laughs> in 2024, I hope to really, um, you know, tighten up my shoelaces when it comes to investing in business and, you know, just multiplying the businesses. Because as this economy has taught us, you can't You want to multiply more than what you already you have. Know, <laughs> well, I just want to <laughs> be more intentional about investing in other businesses. Because as we all know, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm-hmm. You know, COVID showed us that this economy has showed us that. So um, making sure that I have a diversified a, a portfolio when it comes to the businesses that I'm investing in. And we have the right guess for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are the bold money moves <laughs> yeah. you've done that I've made? made? So I think the boldest money move I typically make is every year just reviewing my money, reviewing, seeing where I'm spending, what I'm spending on, what I've invested in and how it's actually performing. Because I think this is bold because it's scary to like mm-hmm. really look at these numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's bold because it helps you be realistic, be like not delusional and actually make moves that make sense for you. Wow. I think for me, it's having separate accounts and being intentional about saving for a rainy day. And there have many rainy days because this is that year. Um, I think that's, that's something that I'm really proud of that I've done. And learning to just have... This is the account for spending. Ikisha. Imagine. Tajipanga. <laughs> in a sink. In a sink. Yeah. yeah. It just uh, the other day, I was just reviewing my financial journal and I didn't know about sinking fund and emergency fund. Mm-hmm. So it's good to know that you've been doing that, girl. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm excited to 
you know, make that the savings and the separate account, like, you know, just, and then now I want to, and that's why I'm looking forward to this conversation is, as Angela was saying, like, how to have these, you know, different portfolios of how you invest, make your money work for you, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And off here, we were talking about, you know, how we are the generation to create generational wealth as black Kenyan women, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, because we, we've seen wealth very old manish mm-hmm. um uh white men um so um you have founded an amazing uh, organization mm-hmm. africa's pocket yeah. let us know like what led into that journey like what inspired you and what's the mission behind it i love this question it's my favorite question to answer Yay. Um, Yay. so the inspiration really came from a question that i've heard so many times it's like where where, where do i start with my money mm-hmm. what do i what do i do first do i budget first do i invest first where do i start mm-hmm. Um, and then it's underpinned by a statistic that really breaks my heart. So right now in Kenya, about 80% of people retire poor. And 80, 80%. That's and what is considered poor? Like what is that bench? Like you cannot afford your basic needs. Mm. So just to give you some numbers, when you get your money from NSSF, when you retire, the average payout is 250,000 Kenya shillings. In total, you're supposed to live on this money for 20 years. It's insane. So wow. my own Shosho gets about 8k a month. Thankfully, she has like other sources of income that kind of, you know, help her do her things. 8k will cover what? Nothing, literally nothing. You know, you can't even buy food, right? It's not enough. So that's why you find a situation where you're having to support that next generation. That's why black tax exists. Mm-hmm. And so when I think about our future where we are successful, it's one where we are able to retire comfortably ourselves Mm -hmm. and even leave something for the next generation so we can break the cycle. Because when you're having to support the generation above you, it means that your own needs take, you know, a back seat. So that's the mission for us. And it's just kind of helping people figure out how do you get there? How How do you get to a comfortable retirement and also enjoy life along the way? And by answering that question, where do I start? And what's like, how did Val find herself in this space of money? Were you always like, you know how people say, if they are singer, they're like, I started singing when I was three. <laughs> when I was like, three. Did, <laughs> did you ask for a cash register to play with when, when you were five? Like, instead of a Barbie doll? Like, yeah. I mean, no, I kind <laughs> of, but not really. So I've grown up around entrepreneurs. I okay. come from three generations of entrepreneurs. Yeah. So my yes. great-grandmother, my grandmother, my mom. Mm-hmm are all female entrepreneurs and my mom used to have a hardware shop and I used to be like her cashier from when I was you know those ages eight-ish nine-ish so I was also very interested in money from a young age but career-wise I found myself in this space in in finance in New York I saw what we were doing to help like very wealthy people manage their money Mm -hmm. and coming back home it's like why can't we do this for ourselves so that's how I found myself in this space I love that. Mm-hmm. A, a diaspora coming back home to bring resources to help build up the community. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs that are tuned in, um, people that are currently in business. Uh, what are some of the biggest do's and don'ts when it comes to investing in business? Oh, there are so many. <laughs> so I think the first one is I'll think about it from the perspective of your own business. I'll say the number one rule is separate your personal from your business. Think about your business as a different entity as something that's here to serve you. Mm. I think a lot of the times when we're talking about business, people romanticize it and they feel almost like you have to sacrifice for so long because of this magical payout at the end. But what I say is, let your business serve you from day one. Whether that means it's paying for your salary, paying you some benefits, it's helping you like, you know, be in a space that you're passionate about or whatever. So let it serve you from day one. And then keep your business accountable. So once you've figured out what it is that it's supposed to do for you, um, then make sure that you're tracking every week, every month, every quarter, if you're going closer to that goal or not. Mm -hmm. So that you're not in this space where you're just waiting one day for it to pop off Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you don't know when the day is and you don't know how you're doing towards that goal. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I think there's someone who mentioned in our previous episodes that mostly women entrepreneurs, we tend to have a bedroom affair with yes. our businesses mm-hmm. and we we kind of hold on to the idea you don't want to share it because 
you feel like someone is going to you know take it away from you mm. yet you don't want to explore the opportunities that exist out there that could actually multiply what you're trying to build that mm. could be a product a service or whatever um so let's talk about the mindset behind money making mm-hmm. and what how we've been socialized as you know women mm-hmm. um how do you go into that conversation with Africa's pocket or in you know in conversations that you had in either workshops or events um you know in in, in that conversation from a mindset perspective mm-hmm. i find that analogy so interesting like we treat our businesses like a bedroom affair um <laughs> i think that's true because women are, are not bold when it comes to like business moves you'll see a man agreeing to do a deal and he has no idea I see. <laughs> <laughs> the code <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> idea uh, actually uh, yesterday i was in a conversation with somebody who was like next year i'm going to buy a house i think that house is like 20 million shillings i'm like where's the money he's like i'll find it don't worry he's like in fact what mm-hmm. i need is just to get into the room <laughs> and i Love said it. okay <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Whereas for us even in the context of business before you start a business you're like I need to understand how I'm going to find the first customer where the thing is coming from the money to buy the first shipment etc etc and I think I would say one of the if you're going to go into business it is you you do need to take a, a few risks. Mm-hmm. And as women we have that advantage that because we are naturally a bit more risk averse than a man you know you will be more careful and actually therefore more business more businesses led by women are successful mm-hmm. as a result of that calculated moves yeah calculated yeah. moves mm-hmm. but i think we need to mix a bit you know you need mm-hmm. to have both you know yeah. mm-hmm. i think some of the things like people luck you know the way you've just talked about <coughs> um man wanting to take a risk and all that stuff but i feel like the reason why we hesitate hesitate mm-hmm. is like maybe the understanding of the financial literacy around what is savings mm. what is investment mm-hmm. what is a good investment what is a bad investment um understanding that like there's an example of i had of someone who gives all her money to the husband mm-hmm. mm. and um is left with nothing they're not in this country the husband is in this country the wife is not in this country mm-hmm. so i'm like oh so now the lady was advising this person who pays her teach this person to put money aside she's it's mm. her money she's not stealing yeah. from anybody yeah for as i'm as what i've been doing for rainy times mm-hmm. right there are unexpected emergencies so like I know that within let's talk a little bit about Africa's pocket. I know that within it that there's courses that people can you know sign up to um what are some of the things that you teach like what are the three tips like must do's when it comes to financial understanding that people need to be better at even if it's from entrepreneurship point of view or a, a savings point of view investment point of view mm-hmm. those kind of things. Good question. First that story is so hard to break here. Yes. Mm-hmm. Everything she gives everything. I'm and 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 you know this person also ends up having to still top up because the money this person the husband mm. doesn't use the money to pay for the school fees so still tops up and it's a case for so many it's financial abuse yeah, yeah. it really yeah. is yeah and this the, the sad thing is these stories are so prevalent mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. so so prevalent um and i'm proud that a lot of our customers are women about 90% of our customers are women um which is good that's yeah. good very progressive yeah <laughs> like yeah and i think that for me the literacy part of our business because we have our courses and we have our investment platform the courses for me are about gaining confidence and understanding what's possible for you so you don't end up in a situation like that mm-hmm. because i bet that a part of like the reason why she's sending the money to this man is because she was told it's a man's job to take care of the money mm-hmm. that stuff is not for you it's too complicated mm. and the thing is because girl <laughs> sorry <laughs> can never be me you is such me <laughs> like it said <laughs> you told hey that I leave to him mm. but the thing is it's not it's not complicated it's just that we were not taught about it so it's just you learn personal finance the same way you learn maths right mm. and for us the courses are really just about giving you that confidence So when I think about what does it take to be confident in your personal finances we have three pillars that we think of. Okay. The first one is your income. What's your plan to make money? 
And a lot of people think about income as something that is you're told this is your salary and then you accept. But you can actually have a strategy around how much money you make every year. You can give yourself targets and you can have a plan to achieve those numbers. So we help you think about that. Then the second thing is your expenses. And every time we talk about expenses, people think it's about reducing your expenses. But I like to think about it more like optimizing. So you decide what you like to spend money on and what you don't like spending money on and then you do that intentionally. You talked about intention earlier. Uh-huh. Yes. So like I love spending money on travel, I love spending money on food and like experiences like that, but I hate hate fees. So I'm the kind of person who will pay an Uber 200 bob in two 100 bob transa- like transactions. So I pay zero fees. Oh. <laughs> <Smart>. <laughs> and then I'll spend like $1000 on a trip. You know, it it doesn't need to make sense, right? Um, But it's about being intentional. So we teach you how to think about your money in that way. Mm. Because expenses come with a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of I should do this, I should do that. But we just empower you to think about it in a way that makes sense for you. Wow. And then the third pillar is investments. So investments are about growth. And a lot of people think that when you take your money and you save it in a money market fund, um, then you withdraw it in six months you've invested, but you haven't. What you've done is you've just saved for an expense. Right? Mm. You actually haven't grown anything. So we help you think about how do you invest for real so that you can actually get to a situation where you're no longer having to work for the money you spend. The money is using you as the ladder. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very interesting. Uh, so you talked about money market. Um, uh, a victim of that i thought i'm actually <laughs> investing uh maybe break it down for you know for the reactors who are listening in mm-hmm. and they're like okay i've been i put maybe like 500 on there and i'm just expecting like you know that good interest mm. uh but basically that's it's not that's not it so high yield investments where do i start so when it i think with investing the first thing is is that understanding the difference between investing and saving mm-hmm. so it's totally okay to save but you also have to invest. And what would you do with the percentage? What would the percentage be? I don't. I, that question for me is so personal. Mm. Um, it's. I think you have to personalize it. Mm. You have to like you figure out like what's important to you. So if you have, you know, for example, you want to, I don't know, stop working at forty, you cannot save the same percentage as somebody who's comfortable mm-hmm. waiting till sixty-five. Fire, baby. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> mm-hmm. So it's about you and you. What do you want? What are your goals? So that's actually step one, set Mm -hmm. goals. Mm -hmm. Set goals that are yours for real, that are not given to you by mom or social or Instagram, Mm -hmm. that are truly yours, that are (laughs) values-based. I like that. (laughs) I like how everything is is created by our own personalized. There's no cookie-cutter way of doing anything. So literally, we all have our own vision boards for Mm -hmm. like the financial goals that we want to reach. Just to piggyback off of what Lush had talked about earlier, mm-hmm. um, there are unique challenges that women face when it comes to money. And one of them is financial cheating. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something that's not talked about enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see a lot of our Olympian champions faces where, again, they get s- their money gets swindled by their husbands. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, I think the simple pillars that you put out there are just those basic um, things that they can implement on a day-to-day basis yeah. to help them set boundaries. Like, what is important when setting financial boundaries? Especially mm. in relationships. Mm. Yeah. And that one is deep. I feel like I'm watching myself. Does that make sense? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? <laughs> it's deep. Because Yo. honestly, also when you're in love, like you're not <laughs> rational. You're not exactly. doing. <laughs> you're not doing what you're we taught to do. We do love and do. injustice, by the way. <laughs> love is Continue. blind even when it comes so, to money it's true <laughs> it's true especially <laughs> <laughs> so how do you set boundaries I, I guess the first thing is like educate yourself empower yourself so you can ask the right questions and you can participate I think that's the most important thing so you don't feel intimidated by the idea of looking at a budget, looking at an investment, buying a piece of land, you know, like just empowering yourself with that knowledge. And then I think taking responsibility, like we have to change this narrative that Mm. managing money is the man's job. Mm. Yeah. It's a partnership, you know. And in order for it to be a partnership, you have to show him that you can bring something to the table. So I think that's what I would say. It's like empower yourself so that you are able to enforce your boundaries in a sort of 
credible way. I think I'll add to it by saying my cousin always told me, give money that you're willing to lose. Mm. Like when you give it, mm. just be okay that you'll never get it back. If you if you get let's say let's say you you borrow, I'll only give you five k. Because if you don't give me, it's fine. I can live without it. Mm-hmm. I can li- I can get that five k easy. Don't give money that you can't get easily back, and you're gonna every time you see me. Mm-hmm. I see you Be on your on your Instagram, <laughs> living your best life in that one thousand dollar table, and you owe me money. Mm-hmm. You're like, so, what are you yeah. doing? So give money, and I thought that was such a good a good rule to go by because mm-hmm. then I give what I'm comfortable giving. Like I'm giving with no conditions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then also another thing is if it, if I am giving you money is. Asking, so what's the plan? What's your contingency plan of paying me back? Yeah. Have it in writing, yeah. especially if it's a lot, yeah. so that if ever you found yourself in like a legal whatever situation, situation. yeah. But yeah. I found that that one for give what you're willing to lose mm-hmm. is makes you even stop and say, mm, actually, I can't give you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, my question would be, there are all these new get quick get rich quick kind of fixes mm-hmm. you know i have a katenda nipatie 1000 mm-hmm. i'll give you with cg 100 bob on top and uh, unfortunately i've been a victim <laughs> <laughs> shamelessly <laughs> no and you talked about like agreement i didn't have an agreement oh. until today two years down the line i i have not seen my money i've not seen my interest but unfortunately i don't have the legal way to go about it mm-hmm. so that was a stupid 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 investment let's talk about strategic investment mm-hmm. so we are not investing in uh, money market 2024 you talked about land so what what are those practices or what are those strategic investment opportunities mm-hmm. that we can tap into especially as women mm-hmm. say for example you earning let's say a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand uh where do you start mm-hmm. like yeah like something safe but still high yield so let me first start by saying mm-hmm. I, it's not about not investing in money market funds. Mm-hmm. It's about using them the right way. Mm-hmm. And so I think when you're thinking about investing, the first th- mindset shift that has to happen is um, time. It takes time for your investments to yield mm-hmm. results. Um, so the biggest thing that I would say is start by shifting your mindset about how much time you're giving things to grow for you. That's how you don't get into the trap of, yeah. you know, Talk 10 days, 6 months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because if you're investing for 10 years and you're only investing even 30k a month, you'd be surprised by how much you can end up mm. with at the end. It mm-hmm. could be in the 30s of million, you know, 30 million, 50 million, depending on your strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, so in terms of strategic investments, so the prep, like our philosophy as Africa's pocket is that you invest in a diversified portfolio, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So that means that you're investing in a, a couple of different assets. There's no perfect investment. Mm-hmm. But what you have is an investment strategy that gets you a certain result. So let me give the example of you're trying to lose weight. A lot of people will come and be like, oh, I'm trying to lose 5 kgs. What's the best exercise? That's kind of the same question you're asking when you're asking what's the best investment. Mm-hmm. Is the answer squats? Is it push-ups? Is it you know crunches uh, the oh. answer is that there's a there's a you know yeah. a full program that you have to go through that you change your nutrition you exercise this many times a day you sleep well you know it's a combination of things so with investments it's the same um what i would say is that in kenya the way you can figure out what a good return is is by checking what the government is paying mm-hmm. for the same time horizon that you're investing for so say you're trying to invest in a house in 10 years um, what you need to check is how much is the government paying for a bond that's 10 years away, that's mm-hmm. going to mature mm-hmm. in 10 years. Mm-hmm. If the answer is 13%, then you look for investments that give you 13% mm-hmm. or more. Wow. Where, like, so <coughs> resources, where can I... Can Why is that us? information <laughs> available? Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> Africa's, <laughs> Africa's <laughs> pocket. Yeah. Africa's pocket. Okay. That information is available on the central bank government, the central bank of Kenya's website, mm-hmm. so you can find out the rates. But that's what I'm saying, educating yourself, empowering yourself is the first step. Yeah. As we're approaching uh, the end of 2023 and we're planning for 2024, what are the top tips um, that I should think about as we think about our vision board? Mm -hmm. For those who are watching and listening, um, speak to our overreactors. 
things that they need to especially with the economy mm. the rate is rocking mm. you know and it's a global thing right mm. it's not it's not just a kenyan thing inflation prices they don't seem to be looking like they're shifting mm. do i not buy a car because now petrol is high like mm. what are the how do we in terms of speak to our mindset mm-hmm. speak to our tangible practices so going into next year so the first thing i'd say is everybody needs a rainy day fund emergencies will happen so start there try and save up 6 months try and get to a year it can take some time but try and get to a year of expenses and the second thing everyone has to do is save for retirement we don't want to end up in a situation where you're getting 8k per month mm-hmm. so start thinking about your retirement so that the people who come next don't have to support you and you can break this curse then the stuff in between be realistic and be honest about truly what's important to you not what's important to your mom not what's important for instagram a good example is a lot of people don't really want homes anymore mm. yet everyone is like yeah i want to buy this house with a garden somewhere then they're also yeah. telling you i want to travel for 6 months of the year see those two things don't make sense right? yeah they don't it add up yeah it doesn't add up so it's like truly truly set goals that are for yourself yeah and then work backwards from those goals. Mm-hmm. So it's like if you need this much every year to travel, then you save based on that. If you want in 5 years to take a break from work, you know, do the math and save based on that. Um <coughs> and the math is not hard and power yourself to understand how to do it. It's not hard. I think I have uh, one last question, sorry. I think I feel like as women we're ne- not good at negotiating. Mm-hmm. Can you speak on that? Like when it cuz you said um about you said something about salary earlier Income, yeah. so even from um either working for someone or even knowing my worth in terms of like for instance i'll talk i'll use myself as an example so outside of this i'm building my uh myself as a global moderator and mc mm-hmm. how do i get better at positioning myself as what i know mm-hmm. i'm worth because i know what i can give to that role That's such a great question. I struggle with this as well. Um and it's very easy for me. So from my context is we raise money and we have a valuation for the business. It's very easy for me to be like, "Oh, it's okay. I'll you know, I'll take less. I'll take a smaller valuation because I need the money today." The the actually the most important thing that I've done that's helped me is surround myself with men who mentor me and are like, "Val, what are you doing?" Those men who say they're buying a 20 million house and they don't even have a million shillings. those guys they push me to be bold and wow. i know that's a controversial thing to say but you then are your allies yeah. yeah interesting i was listening to a podcast and they were talking about value creation mm-hmm. that's where we start uh, i think it's the thing which uh, uh napoleon hills book that talks about value what what that value do you have to offer as lash as mm-hmm. a, a moderator to the world that you know you have to put a price tag and everyone will buy it that's mm-hmm. like thinking money making from that point of view mm-hmm. has changed my life and i think that's the energy i'm going with mm-hmm. uh, into 2024. 2024 and i think women as women we need to know our value you know by every fiber, fiber of your your being that you can be a global moderator mm-hmm. no doubt but but you <laughs> got it you know we all about bold moves and you know bold women coming with us um you know towards our dreams we are behind you yeah. cheering yeah. you on you. um you, i think one you know you were talking about income as we go to 2024 how do i start envisioning opportunities for money making um because we have to have multiple income streams yeah. going forward and that, i think that's where it starts right yeah. so how do i start seeing okay money 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 yeah. yeah i think it goes back to something we were talking about earlier mm-hmm. and what you've just said around value creation mm-hmm. so everything that people pay for is because you're solving a problem for them so the first thing is becoming very crystal clear on what problem do i solve for people i am a problem solver <laughs> i'm getting affirmations for you girls yes uh-huh. yeah so it's like what problem am i solving for people and then how can i help them understand how good i am at solving that problem mm-hmm. so i can you know i can demand a higher price tag 
for the solution I'm providing. Price tag. Yeah. Ooh, what's my price tag? What's my price tag? A million dollars. <laughs> I like yeah, uh, yeah. I, I am really the problem solver mm -hmm. and I am the one. Yeah. Yes. Period. And I'm the best. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore you should pay me the most. Yes. Yes. I'm the best so that way you should pay me. Put that on a t-shirt, Angela. Put that on a t-shirt. I got you. <laughs> I'm manifesting these money moments. Yeah. Um, so as we, you know, get ready to wrap up, mm -hmm. um, Val, just tell us, um, I guess, what is that one bold statement you want to leave our listeners and our overreactors with when it comes to making money moves? I think my my statement is that it's possible. You can start very small. You can start with even 10k a month and build up to becoming a millionaire. It's possible. There's strategy that you can follow. There's maths that can help you out. Just empower yourself to figure out how to do it. And because you're going to invest for <coughs> such a long time, you know, if you start in your 30s, you're going to invest till you're in your 50s, maybe 20 years, yeah? So taking a year to learn is nothing. It's a drop, you know, a drop in the bucket. So just empower yourself. You heard it, ladies. Keep walking. Keep walking. Financial independence is possible. Mm. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. And it doesn't have to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You have to be uh, very intentional. And the power of compounding. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Um, it's amazing. I'm, I'm ready to get rich. <laughs> I think just change impossible, put an apostrophe and say I'm possible. So um, thank you very much for this conversation. Yes. And uh, we'd love to have you again and have you more of our events. Uh, by the way, Val was uh, a Hills Connect uh, guest speaker and she was awesome. Please, um, just before we leave, how can people get to know about Africa's Pocket, share, share your information. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram at Africa's Pocket and our website is africaspocket.com. Awesome. Great. <laughs> you can join us next time for more bold conversations around money, around everything that's, you know, women empowerment and progressive portrayal of women. Uh, it's been amazing having this conversation. Yes. I just want to get out of this studio and go make money. Yes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> making money in this studio. You just didn't know it. Oh, it yes. <laughs> <That's so fun. laughs> um, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back again um, out in Capital FM on Wednesday at 10 p.m. And you can also catch this episode, watch it or listen to it uh, via YouTube on Capital FM or SoundCloud for Capital FM or Sister Speaks Global's podcast platform on Google, Spotify, and Apple. And you can interact and follow us on Instagram at Overreact and Sister Speaks 254 and on TikTok as well. So this is where the bold conversation happens and we keep moving and we keep walking. And of course, this episode has been proudly sponsored by Johnny Walker, a bold drink to be enjoyed in moderation Drink responsibly, not for sale for persons under the age of 18. Don't drink and drive, and drink better, not more. And um, once again, thank you for watching. Uh, we have been comfortable doing so. Um, as you see on set, everything that you see is from Alka Deco. They currently have a 30% discount. It's a spirit of giving. So go out there, think about yourself or think about others. I'm also available if you want to give a gift. Um, it's your girl, Lash Angela. It has been indeed a pleasure. And it's your girl, Mo Mohoya. I wish you happy holidays and keep walking. It's your girl, Angela Wamboy. And let's manifest more money moments in 2024. Ladies, let's, let's overreact. overreact.